dielectric loss when electrical energy is applied to a dielectric material electrical energy is absorbed by the dielectric material and it is dissipated in the form of heat this heat is called as dielectric loss so for example uh, let us consider a purified gas which is placed in an it capacitor so when an electric field is applied to the capacitor voltage that is the current leads the voltage by 90 degrees current leads the voltage exactly by 90 degrees this is voltage and this is current current leads the voltage exactly by 90 degrees that is the power loss is given by pl is equal to vi cos theta here theta is equal to 90 degrees therefore vi cos 90 degrees therefore this is equal to 0 therefore power loss is equal to 0 when current leads the voltage exactly by 90 degrees then there is no power loss in practical but in practical the capacitors which we use in the laboratories we are not getting we are having some power loss that is the dielectric uh, dielectric loss the current does not lead the voltage exactly by 90 degrees whereas it leads the voltage by 90 minus del this is what is called the power loss this is what is called the power loss so what the current leads the voltage by 90 minus del therefore theta is equal to 90 minus del so we know what is power loss power loss pl is equal to vi cos theta or vi cos 90 minus del 90 minus del so cos 90 minus theta is what sin theta so that is equal to vi sin del vi sin del so we know what is ohm's law ohm's law is given by v is equal to i r or i is equal to v by r i is the current v is the voltage and r is the resistance so suppose if x c is the resistance capacitance resistance of the capacitance therefore i is equal to v by x c so we know what is frequency frequency is given by 1 by 2 pi r c so that is equal to 1 by 2 pi x c into c or x c is equal to 1 by 2 pi f c now substitute the value of x c in the above equation so already we have derived the power loss no? in that, uh, that equation what is power loss power loss pl is equal to vi sin del so substituting in this equation power loss pl is equal to 2 pi f v square sin del so if you see in this equation f frequency is constant c is constant v is constant only variable is del so since the uh, since del is very sin del is very small we can replace it in this by tan del therefore the power loss pl is directly proportional to tan del so so from this equation we can understand that the power loss directly depends upon the frequency directly depends upon the frequency so but in actual that is if if it is a purified uh, gas or a purified liquid or when it is a perfect uh, dielectric material where there is no loss the current should lead the voltage by 90 degrees so if the current leads the voltage by 90 degrees then we can we say that there is no power loss but in the actual or in the <coughs> capacitors which we use in the laboratories are not perfect dielectrics there may be some loss so while doing the experiments also some electronics experiments you can feel the heat when you touch a capacitor you can feel the heat so it is uh, it is nothing but the power loss some amount of the electrical energy is absorbed by the dielectric material and it is dissipated in the form of heat that heat and dissipation of heat energy is called the dielectric loss so that dielectric loss directly proportional or it directly depends upon the frequency dielectric breakdown 
if a dielectric material is placed in an electric field and if the electric field is increased to a certain level called the critical level after this what happens the dielectric material loses its insulating property and becomes as a conductor so that is what is called dielectric breakdown that is the breakdown region where it loses its original property and it behaves as another property so dielectric materials are insulators it will not conduct electricity up to an critical electric field so after that what happens when the field increases uh, that is the dielectric property breaks and it becomes as a conductor this is what is called dielectric breakdown and the electric field strength at which the breakdown takes place is called as dielectric strength dielectric strength so this dielectric strength is given as dielectric voltage by thickness of the dielectric material so what what is dielectric breakdown when a dielectric material is placed in an electric field and if the field is increased up to a critical level it loses its property it loses its insulating property and becomes as a conductor so where at the point where it loses its property is called dielectric breakdown the field strength the dielectric strength is given as dielectric voltage by thickness of the dielectric material so there are five different types of dielectric breakdown one is intrinsic intrinsic or avalanche avalanche breakdown thermal breakdown electrochemical breakdown discharge breakdown and defect breakdown so there are five different types of dielectric breakdowns first one is intrinsic or avalanche breakdown thermal breakdown electrochemical breakdown discharge breakdown and defect breakdown first let us see what what is intrinsic breakdown so that is we know only conduction takes place only when the electrons from the valency band moves to the conductional band so in case of a dielectric material this is the band gap this is the band gap so this band gap is above 3 electron volt for an electron to cross this band gap needs an higher energy so now if an higher energy is given some electrons in the valency band will jump to the conductional band and will start conducting this type of breakdown is called as intrinsic breakdown next is avalanche breakdown this is valency band and this is conductional band so now when the field is further increase so intrinsic breakdown what happens when the field is increased to, to a critical level electrons from the valency band will jump to the conductional band and it be, and it will become as a dielectric material will become as a conductor in case of avalanche breakdown further increase of the field what happens some electrons will diffuse and break the covalent bond in the valency band and create more number of free electrons so or, or secondary electrons so these secondary electrons on further increase of the field will move from the valency band to the conductional band creating more number of electrons jumping from the valency band to the conductional band and more energy is electrical energy is produced this type of breakdown is called as avalanche breakdown next is thermal breakdown so we have seen what is dielectric loss when the electrical energy is applied to a dielectric material some amount of the electrical energy is absorbed by the dielectric material and some energy is and it is dissipated in the form of heat that is what is called dielectric loss so in this case also if an electrical uh, electrical field is applied to a dielectric material some energy will be absorbed by the uh, dielectric material and it will be dissipated in the form of heat sometimes what happens the amount of heat energy produced will be high compared to that of the energy dissipated so what happens naturally breakdown takes place this type of breakdown is called as thermal breakdown next is electro electrochemical breakdown this electrochemical reaction increases the mobility of the electrons and decreases the insulating resistance of the dielectric material now the dielectric material will become a conducting 
material. This type of breakdown is called as electrochemical breakdown. So, what is electrochemical breakdown? It is also similar to that of an thermal breakdown. When the temperature is increased, the mobility of ions in the dielectric material will increase. So, due to this, an electrochemical reaction may be induced in the dielectric material. So, on increasing the temperature, the mobility of ion increases due to this. What happens? The insulating resistance of the dielectric material decreases and the dielectric material becomes as a conductor. This type of breakdown is called as electrochemical breakdown. Discharge breakdown. So, this discharge breakdown takes place due to the presence of some impurities or bubbles inside the dielectric specimen. So, for example, if you take a capacitor, in the capacitor, if we are using a gas dielectric or a liquid dielectric material, suppose we are using a liquid dielectric material, if there is a small air gap, so due to this air gap, what happens? Small bubbles can be formed inside the dielectric material. So, this dielectric material, what happens? When an electric field is given, these ions will ionize, these bubbles can ionize easily. So, the, after ionizing what happens, it is also considered as a defect. So, what happens? And breakdown takes place. This type of breakdown is called as discharge breakdown. Last one is the defect breakdown. So, if you take the defect breakdown, this mainly occurs due to some of the imperfections present inside the dielectric material. It may be the dielectric material may be of any type. It can be a gas or it can be a solid or it can be a liquid. For example, let us consider a solid dielectric material. For example, a mica sheet. So, in this mica sheet, it will not be perfect. There may be some defects. That is some porosities or some holes or some cracks inside the mica sheet. So, because of these cracks, also what happens? Breakdown will take place because these cracks can ionize easily. So, after ionizing what happens? It will reduce the insulating resistance of the material. So, now what happens? The dielectric material will become as a conducting material. This type of breakdown is called as defect breakdown. What are all the remedies to have a perfect dielectric material without breakdown? So, there should be some factors which has to be considered. One is the the dielectric loss should be very, very less. The dielectric constant should be high. The insulating resistance should be high. It should have high specific heat capacity. It should be fire resistance. It should have less density. So, if all these factors are considered while designing a dielectric material or the breakdown can be decreased or the dielectric loss can be decreased in dielectric materials. Dielectric breakdown and dielectric loss can be reduced in dielectric materials. So, these are some of the remedies of dielectric breakdown. Dielectrics in capacitors. So, there are three applications of dielectrics. One is dielectrics are mainly used in capacitors and it is used as an insulating material in transformers and it is used in industrial heating purpose. In industries, it is used for heating purpose. These three are the main applications of dielectric. So, if we want to use a dielectric material in a capacitor, these or all these factors should be considered. One is it must have a high dielectric constant. It should possess high dielectric strength. It should have high specific resistance and it should have low dielectric loss. If all these properties are satisfied, then the dielectric material can be easily used in capacitors for storing charges. Dielectric in transformers. So, these dielectric materials can also be used as an insulating material for transformers. So, while selecting a dielectric material as an insulating material for a transformer, all the following properties should be satisfied. It should have a low dielectric constant. So, in case of uh, this thing, that is what? In case of capacitors, dielectrics used in capacitors, it should have high dielectric constant. So, di high dielectric constant. Whereas, in case of transformers, it should have low dielectric constant, do low dielectric loss, high resistance. It should have high resistance. 
it should have high dielectric strength it should have chemical stability and it should have high moisture resistance because all these transformers are placed in open air so when it is placed in open air there may be rain there may be fog so it has it should have high moisture resistance so if if the moisture resistance is low automatically what happens the dielect the reliability of the dielectric material will be very very low suppose it, it is in the open air it may undergo some chemical reaction like oxidation and other reactions so if all these reactions takes place then also the reliability of the material will reduce so to avoid all these things the material should be selected in such a way that it should have low dielectric constant high dielectric loss low dielectric loss high resistance high dielectric strength high chemical stability and high moisture resistance so if all these factors are satisfied then the dielectric material can be easily used as an insulating material in transformer so uh, many materials are used in uh, as an insulating material in transformers for example we are using glass we are using mica we are using ceramics in some cases we use asbestos poly uh, pvc uh, pvc and other uh, oil dielectrics also petroleum oil silicon oil some of these oils are also used as insulating material in transformer next is ferro electricity so when an electric polarization takes place even in the absence of the external field in the dielectric then it is called as ferroelectricity and the materials which exhibits this effect is called as ferroelectric materials so what is ferroelectricity when an electric polarization takes place even in the absence of the external field without the absence of the external field if the electric polarization takes place in a dielectric it is called as ferro electricity and all the materials which exhibits this effect is called as ferroelectric materials